So the same thing always happens when a new device launches. The media gets review units ahead of the official launch, and we get to use them while we write our review. Then the press embargo lifts, every outlet posts their reviews and videos at the same time, writers and commenters go back and forth, and it's a huge frenzy of opinion and buzz for about a day. And then it all goes away. Sure, there's some follow-up coverage, but after that initial blast, almost no one revisits the device to see how well it's aged. Because we're all on to the next big thing already. So let's do something about it. Let's have a look at a device after a couple of weeks after release and when it's not shiny and new anymore. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now. This is the iPad Air. And this is episode 35 of After the Buzz. A little over eight months have passed since the launch of the iPad Air, and at times when Microsoft has launched the Surface Pro 3, and when Samsung keeps pushing the bar with its tablet lineup, or even more important, at times when Apple is already preparing for the successor of the iPad Air, would it still be worth it for you to buy this tablet after the buzz? Let's talk about it. I've been using the iPad Air since launch date after my strong disappointment with the iPad Mini, and so far my experience has been positive for the most part. You will remember that in my durability report I reported that I had some hardware issues with the display with some dead pixels, and Apple was nice enough to replace it for free in the Genius Bar, and ever since then, which was February, it still looks like new. It's hard to not acknowledge how thin and light this tablet is and how pleasant it is to use for content consumption, so we're sure that it'll age well for the vast majority of you. Aside from the great build quality and design, even cooler is the fact that the market is flooded with accessories to help you take advantage of it. Whether it's keyboards that merge seamlessly or many other things, owning iPad hardware has some benefits for the most part. The fact that Apple also keeps design cycles for at least two years also ensures that whatever accessory you invest on today will probably work on the next model. Software is really where things get mixed. Having a tablet running iOS has its benefits and its caveats. If we talk about the good stuff, I'm already running iOS 8 beta on this iPad, and whomever isn't is already using the latest and greatest version of iOS without the drama of having to wait for software updates. This makes the use of an iPad over time to be drama-free, and trust me, that matters. When it comes to iOS 8, aside from some minor bugs, it runs on this tablet like a champ, and what I love the most about iOS 8 is that it finally gives us some better stock tablet applications, which we criticized a lot on iOS 7, even though, yeah, there is still no split-screen multitasking. After that, the cooler part about owning an iPad is that iOS has the best selection of tablet applications in the market, and if there is no tablet application for the service that you want, the iPhone application works on it just fine as an alternative, as yes, the iPhone is the other device that has more applications as well. The downside here is when you match the software with my overall user experience, and notice, I said my. Sadly, not everyone can use an iPad for everything, and uh, even though some of you just use a computer to breeze the web, and yes, the iPad can replace your computer just fine if you just use that, my case is different, and for many other people it's the same case, since regardless of how powerful the A7 64-bit chip is, the iPad is still just a content consumption tablet, for the most part. It is still just an iPad. Even if you actually can get some work done here, it is too cumbersome or too underpowered to get most serious work done. If you just want to play a game, surf the web, or watch a movie, or view some documents here and there, you'll be just fine, but sadly in my case, because of the limitations, I find myself using the iPad less and less because I don't really have much time to play. Now that being said, consuming content, again, has great things and also has some challenges. On the good side, I'll admit that I love the long-lasting battery life on this thing. It lasts a full day, pretty much, and I love the fact that this particular iPad charges in no time. I also love my choice for this LTE model because data plans for tablets can be quite cheap, and it's really cool to always be connected. Sadly, my biggest issue when talking about the negative side is that if you really want to use this thing for content consumption, you need storage, and I mean a lot of storage. After always buying 64 gig iPads, I went with a 32 gig model this time to make up for the LTE upgrade, and boy, am I regretting this. 
At times when the best games weigh one gigabyte and purchase movies weigh four gigabytes, you really can't get by with 16 gigs. And in my experience, 32 gigs is still little. And uh, again, unless you want to be syncing this iPad constantly, which makes your experience cumbersome, this is really what makes using an iPad complicated. The fact that you have to buy the more expensive iPad if you want to get the best experience, and that is really unfortunate, as there is no expandable storage. And yes, I do have to talk about the camera because that's part of the video, and the iPad has the same cameras that we've been using since the third generation iPad. 5 megapixels and, uh, well, they're good. They take some good photos and they also film some good video, but uh, you will look hilarious taking photos with this thing. And the problem again is that if you don't have enough storage, it's really pointless for you to film so much video as well. And that leads me to my final thoughts of my experience with the iPad after the buzz. An LTE 64 gig iPad will cost you $900, which is too pricey for the product that can only consume content and also too pricey when you consider that the Surface Pro 3 can be found for less money and can get some work done. Yes, for content consumption, the iPad is the best. You really can't compare it to the Surface Pro 3, but I do think that many people can't really afford a $900 tablet and a computer. And that's really where the problem is poised with the iPad. And I'm sure that Apple has been noticing this as tablet sales have stagnated for the iPad in the past couple of quarters, mainly because people have noticed that they can't really use an iPad for work and uh, you can't really afford to own two products most of the time. So, bottom line, would we recommend that you buy an iPad Air after 8 months of use? It really depends on you. Honestly, the difference between the next generation iPad Air and this one probably will just be Touch ID, so if you really can't wait, you probably won't miss out on much with the next generation iPad. So yeah, it could be a good time to buy, but then again, we're just a couple of months away, so if you can wait, then just wait it off. That being said, on the positive note, I do love this iPad for what it can do. It's great for content consumption, it feels great. It is gorgeous, it's really beautiful, and it's just fabulous to use it, again, for what it can do. But if you really want to buy a tablet for work, this is not the product for you. It probably can get some work done, but not the best tablet for work. And that's just the reality. Unless you, again, can purchase two products and can use this tablet just for content consumption, it's really hard for us to recommend this to be your only computer. That's it for episode 35 of After the Buzz. Thank you very much for watching. Do you own an iPad Air? Or are you still on the ropes trying to buy one? Make sure you leave us a comment down below and also make sure you follow us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next After the Buzz.